Do you want to be interviewed? Yeah. Say hi to everybody. Oh, hello, kids. You can say hi. Hello, everyone. This is my cat, Nermal. My 13 year old female gray little chonk here. Do you have something to say? No. Hi, everyone. I am here to answer your questions that you asked anonymously through anonymously through Instagram. And uh, let's see what you guys came up with. Some of them are, have been very interesting. I'm going to try to keep my answers short. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Things have not gone to plan at all. So I'm just trying to get through to tomorrow, to be honest. Uh, 10 years out from now seems a little little kind of crazy to plan for but i am willing to take whatever the lord has for me and i'm going to work my butt off in whatever god gives me i will say this i do want kids and so naturally marriage would be the next steps and it's even saying that as a testimony in and of itself because for the longest time i never wanted to be married um i was okay and content with not ever having children I was fine with that. I was fine with being Mother Teresa, to be honest. But the Lord's put a, a very strong call in my life um, that involves marriage and that involves children. And he's been really uh, ministering to me in that lately. If it's the Lord's will, which it is, I'm going to step into it fully. So I'm sure that's within that 10-year range. Next question. If someone cheats on someone, should they break up? Yes. 100% yes. If they're not willing to be loyal within a dating relationship, they're not going to be loyal in a marriage relationship. Yes. And speaking as someone who's been cheated on, um, however, I was married at the time, uh, I would highly suggest that even if you're married, take a time of separation. You need time to heal. And your spouse or your partner needs time to step into true repentance and healing of their own. Either way, I would say dating, marriage, whatever it is, take a time of separation. I'm not saying leave this person. I'm not saying that it's not God's will for you to be with this person. Um, it could still work out. And I hope with everything in me, especially if you're married, that it does work out. But you get that time to separate from this person and heal. Focus on God. Focus on what the Spirit is saying and not your emotions. <laughs> And during that time, if you really, truly focus on healing, they on their healing and their recovery, you on your healing and your recovery, you can make a very educated decision and a rational decision and the best decision for you, especially if you have kids, for your kids and for your marriage as a whole. I hope that if you've ever been cheated on, especially in a marriage, that um, I still hope that your marriage works out. I really do. Um, I really, I really hope that you both can step into a place of true, genuine healing that the person who cheated steps into true, genuine repentance. It's hard. It's a hard thing. So that's a, that's a, I can, that's a question I can just go off on far more than I already have. So if you're dating somebody, should you break up with them? Yes. Leave that relationship right away. And if God shows up to you in a time of prayer outside of that, outside of your emotions, then let God's will be done. Let God show up and, and be the one to tell you that. But you're emotional. You're easily manipulated in a situation like that with your emotions all over the place, with your hurts. And if God visits you in a separate time and God comes to you and says, wait, no, I actually want you to give this person a second chance, then let it be God's will and not the will of the person you're dating, not the manipulation of the person you're dating, not the tears, not the, not the apologies, not the, let it be nothing more than God. And for marriage, it's a little bit more complicated because you're married to this person, especially if you have children. But again, I would say at least separate. Oh, I can so go off on this topic. I'm sorry. How much do you love where you live? I love this question because I love where I live. Just this morning, right before I came out here to film, there was uh, three deer that just walked right in front of my front door. Um, you guys might have seen my story because they just, they were right there. Um, and yeah, I love it. I love nature. I love mountains. This, this place, um, my landlords have actually named the refuge, which is such an appropriate name because when I came, I was so broken. I was so hurt. And this has really been a refuge. 
it's been a time of healing for me and I've just learned to I've learned that by being out here in the mountains and in nature and where it's just quiet do you hear that it's just fun I love where I live I love where I live I'm a mountain girl I'm a hippie for sure and I want to stay out here I want to stay in nature and I don't want to go back to the city I don't what is your next big goal? Is it sad to say that I'm adult enough to say I'm my next big goal is to pay off all of my student loans? Because <laughs> that's where I'm at, guys. <laughs> yes, uh, that's that's probably the the most realistic, honest answer. Is my next big goal is just to be debt free. I want financial freedom. That's that is my next big goal: financial freedom. Will you do things differently in your next relationship? Yes. I really want to know who your influences are outside the church. I really want to know um, who your accountability is. And if I find that you have more influences that are non-Christian and not abiding by Christian standards than you do influences that are Christian and that are holding you accountable to Christian standards, that would be a red flag for me. If I find that there are certain people in your life that you don't want me to meet or be around, that's a red flag for me. So yes, that would probably be the biggest change in my expectations of my new relationship is just being far more aware of the next person's relationships and who they're being influenced by on a regular basis. What have you learned about yourself while camping? I think the first word that comes to mind is capable. Because I've always loved the outdoors. I've always loved camping. I've always loved just being adventurous. But I've never done it by myself until this year. I didn't realize how much I had picked up and learned from my dad, who took me out camping all the time. And... Uh, it was just really awesome to see to see myself in an environment like that and just it came so naturally i'll admit it just came it came so naturally for me i didn't feel uncomfortable or scared it just seemed like everything just flowed um, even though i was doing it for the first time i realized that all the years that i have spent with my dad out in the wilderness and camping and hiking um that it's just something that i i had instilled in me all this time and didn't even know it what is your biggest flex my biggest flex is probably that i have traveled all over the world i've lived in turkey and israel and in most of the places that i've traveled i have ended up meeting diplomats governors and even presidents of nations i've sat down with them at lunch and I've joined them on random tours. So it's just been these random right time, right place kind of situations where I've just gone off on a trip for different purposes, but somehow end up meeting very important people, being influenced by them, being taught by them, and having the opportunity to um, pray with them and pray for them and be prayed for by them. It's been it's been a journey. I, so that's my biggest flex, is that I've traveled the world and I've met many, many diplomats as a result. What's something that we didn't expect from Shekinah? I think I just listed it. I think that I answered that in the last question. I, I love to travel and I've had some really, really wild... I've, I've had some... They're so wild, in fact, and they're so unexpected, and they're so unplanned that I've had people straight up call me a liar when I come home and tell them the stories. Multiple, multiple times throughout my life, I have actually, when I come home from a trip, I share these incredible things like, God, open the door for this to happen, and I met this person, and I did this, and sure, she kind of... I feel like that would be something that you wouldn't have expected from me. I love, I love going overseas. I love those experiences. They're just, they're amazing. Where did your love for the outdoors come from? <laughs> Minus the spiders. My dad, for sure. My dad took us out. I think I mentioned this in one of the other questions, but my dad took us out camping all the time, me and my siblings. Uh, my siblings and I, grammar correct. Sorry, grammar Nazis. But yes, my love for the outdoors came from my dad and my grandpa. They took us out all the time camping. We'd always go fishing. It was just something that we did growing up constantly. Is it... <laughs> what is this question? Who asked this? 
Is it a red flag if they admit they pee in the shower? What kind of question is that? So I would say for the person who admits to it, at least they're honest. <laughs> Alright, another goal question. What is your top goal to achieve this year? This year, by the end of the year, specifically December because it's Christmas time, I want to create an environment where people can really establish deeper relationships. That's all, That's my heart. And so my goal, and I've already been operating in it, is with the Ladies Only events that I've been hosting is just that. it's That's where all the women of our church can come together. But my hope, my prayer, my desire is that from there they can build and establish tight-knit relationships with people. We're building strands in the body of Christ, and with multiple strands comes a stronger cord. And the very last question, I know 100% who asked this one. The question is, can you see what's happening? Do you think they have a clue? Will they fall in love? Well, let me tell you something. I can see what's happening, and they don't have a clue. They'll fall in love, and here's the bottom line. Our trio's down to two. That's it. That's the question, guys. That's what you guys asked me. If you guys have any further questions for me or you want to build off of what I just shared, feel free to DM me, or I left the link up for anonymous questions, so feel free to send me more anonymous questions. I'll be happy to share, happy to talk about it. And stay tuned for next week as Denise will be answering your questions. So be sure to start thinking of good questions for her because we're going to post the link coming right up. Have a blessed day, guys. Bye.